Okay. And then once you're there, you can um, close your eyes if you're ready or keep your eyes open if you'd like. I'm just going to start to focus on your breath. So just notice how you're breathing already. <coughs> and then if you're not already, start to breathe through your nose on the inhale and the exhale. And as you inhale, expand your belly, expand your chest, your upper back. And as you exhale, let it all just fall back into place. Continue to breathe like that for a few rounds. Inhale, expand, exhale, fall. And now, as you get to the end of your exhale, start to pull your navel in and up, picking up your pelvic floor as well. Just giving a little squeeze at the end of your exhale to help your lungs empty out completely. And uh, today's class is going to focus on getting us ready to do and doing backbends, mostly belly down backbends, um, which have a very unique uh, way of challenging us and our breath. Um, I feel like all of us already know that when we backbend, we tend to hold our breath. And so I invite you today to notice that. And then also like there is a point before your breath catches, before you hold your breath where you can still breathe in the back bend. And that might be a nice place to go, or you could go to the place where you can't breathe really and uh, find a way to breathe. So whatever really your energy level is, what, what you is probably gonna determine what you're willing to put into that. I want to couple this with this theme of vulnerability, of, of this idea of backbending being a way of opening your heart. That the, the backbend is uh, offering to receive something. But you have to give something in order to receive it. And so you don't want to give too much. It's hard to receive when you've over given something. And then same thing with giving too little. 
So play your own edge there as we move. You can leave your hands as they are or bring them together in front of your heart. Let's sing the sound of Om. Take a deep inhale. You can open your eyes. This is the journal prompt if you choose to do that part. If not, you can just stay where you are, sit quietly or do, you can go ahead and find your way onto your back, but have your blanket next to you because we're gonna use that soon. But the, my thoughts for this today are around social justice um, because as yogis, if, if you consider yourself to be a yogi, there's a way in which you put yourself out there that people might not like, right? That you, you make yourself vulnerable, you give your truth, and people are either gonna receive it or they're not, but you, you are showing yourself um, and you're not afraid to do that. Or maybe you are afraid, but you do it anyways. And so there's ways that we do that. It, that's obviously like an off the mat thing. Um, and if you can think about the ways that you are doing that or are that maybe you want to do that or maybe like the things that keep you from doing that, but just some thoughts around, um, around how you are in that role in your life right now, um, especially if you consider yourself to be like a yoga person. So we'll just take a few minutes to write down our thoughts about that. Okay, and then so we're gonna use the blanket as a prop here at the beginning. We're gonna um, take the blanket, or if you have an extra yoga mat or something around too, that could work. But just a small blanket, or even a pillow, really doesn't matter, but you're gonna fold it up, or roll it up rather, and create like a little roll. We're just gonna take like a minute or two with this underneath our spine. So you'll lay it on your yoga mat. Um, lay it on your yoga mat and then you're gonna sit down in front of it and ha just have it support your spine. Okay, your head can be hanging off of it um, or not. It kind of depends on how long your blanket is. All right, and then once you're there, you're, you might need to like wiggle a little bit to get comfortable, take whatever leg variation sounds good, and we'll just passively open our chest here for a moment before we start to move. So continue your work of deep breathing.
can start to note any tension that's already at the front of your chest or, or the front of your shoulders, just noticing what you'll be working with. Take another deep breath. And then roll over to one side and take the prop out from underneath you and just slide it over to the side. And then lay down flat on your back for a moment here and just feel the difference. Bend your knees and place your feet on the floor behind your hips, getting ready for bridge pose. Toes facing straight ahead, arms at your sides. Start to press down firmly into your heels and the inner edge of your feet. And then tuck your tailbone toward the back of your knees. Lift your hips up off the ground, interlace your fingers underneath you, roll your shoulders underneath your back. And then lift your chin away from your chest for bridge pose. Come up onto the ball of your feet and see if you can lift your hips a little bit higher and then keep that, bring your heels back down. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other just a little bit. Take another breath. And then take your hands apart and bring your back to the floor. Take your knees towards your chest. Wrap your arms around your legs or hold onto your shins and roll from side to side for a moment, breathing deeply. And begin to set up for round two bridge. Feet right behind your sitting bones or outer hips, toes facing straight ahead, arms at your sides. Start by tucking your tailbone up toward the back of your knees, then lift your pelvis up. Then interlace your fingers, opposite fingers on top this time. Now roll your upper arms underneath you. Lift your chin away from your chest. And then once again, try to see if you can get your hips up just a little smidge higher by coming up on the ball of your feet. Lift your hips, keep them up as you bring your heels down. Really step firmly into that big toe side of your feet for another deep breath. Release your hands, bring your back to the floor. This time, take your feet up toward the ceiling and point and flex your ankles a couple times. And then do some little ankle circles. And go in the opposite direction. Okay, one more bridge pose. Place your feet on the floor. So a little different arm variation here. Bring your arms overhead with the back of your hands on the ground. Yeah. Start by tucking your tail. Notice if your knees start to go out to the side when you do that, step more into the big toe side of your feet, then lift your hips. Okay, and then want you to do this variation for a couple breaths here. Lift your chin away from your chest. One more breath. And bring your hips back down. Okay, so that variation of bridge with your arms overhead, we're gonna thread that into like a little mini vinyasa. So bring your feet up toward the ceiling. 
You can point or flex your feet, it's up to you. Now lift your head and chest and try to touch your toes. Okay. Now the inhale brings you down. So you're gonna inhale, feet to the floor, arms overhead, lift your hips. So coming back to the bridge, inhale. And then exhale, bring your hips down, lift your feet, touch your toes. If you have a hard time doing that in one breath, do it in more than one breath. <laughs> So inhale to bridge if you can, and exhale to touch your toes. Keep going back and forth. And you can try to make this movement that much more uh, effective, I guess effective like muscle building-ish. If when you go to lift up into bridge, you don't let your knees wobble out to the side. You keep them in line with your hips. So that'll just make your legs engage a little bit more. Keep breathing deeply no matter what breath you're on. We'll just do this for a little bit longer. Okay, last few here. Stay in that uh, bridge pose for a second, longer, take another breath. And now we're gonna stay in the toe touch for a second longer. Okay, so back to touching toes, there you go. Yep, now reach your arms forward, look forward between your legs. Yes, okay, and now start to drop just your right leg down. Try to kick yourself in the face with your left leg. You're bring your heel to hover above the floor. Take a breath. Slowly raise your right leg. Try to keep yourself in the face with your right leg. Start to bring your left leg down. So it's like you're trying to do the splits in the air, basically. Lift your head and chest a little higher. Another breath. Slowly raise your left leg. Left leg up. There we go. Good, and then let your head come down, feet come down, and just windshield wiper your knees from side to side for a moment. And then use that side to side motion to turn to one side and come up to standing. All right, and stand at the top of your mat. Feet hip distance apart. I'm going to do just a few sun salutations. Most so of you know how much I despise them. So, Okay, start with your feet hip distance apart, arms at your sides. Inhale, reach out and up, bring your palms together, overhead look up. And then exhale, bend your knees, forward bend, place your fingertips on the ground. Inhale, lift halfway, look forward. Exhale, step back and lower either to the floor or do half push-up, chaturanga. Inhale, curl your chest up. Either if you're on the ground, it's cobra. If you're in the air, it's up dog. Exhale, down dog. Three deep breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, hop or step forward. Feet with distance apart. Inhale, lift halfway up. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward bend, Uttanasana. Inhale, reach out and up as you stand, Urdhva Namaskarasana. Exhale, arms at your sides, mountain pose, Tadasana. One more, just like that. Inhale, reach up, Urdhva. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha. Exhale, step back in lower, chaturanga or to the floor. Inhale, curl up, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. And breathe three deep breaths. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, look forward. 
Exhale, hop or step forward. Inhale, lift halfway up, look forward. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, reach out and up to stand. Exhale, bring your arms to your sides. Getting ready for sun salutation B, bring your feet together. Inhale for chair pose. Sit down as you reach up, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, hop or step back, Chaturanga. Inhale, curl up, Cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog, step your right foot forward, bring your left heel down. Inhale, warrior one, bring your arms up. Yeah. Exhale, Chaturanga or to the floor, whatever variation you're doing here. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, down dog, getting ready to step forward, left side. Back heel spins down, inhale, warrior one, arms up. Exhale, hands down. Step back and ready for another push up, lower down. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, down dog. Take your three deep breaths. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, hop or step forward. Inhale, lift halfway up, bring your feet together. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, Tadasana. Yep, inhale, chair. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, hop or step back, lower down. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right foot steps forward. Coming all the way up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, down dog. Left foot forward this time. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, coming down. Chaturanga or to the floor. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Three deep breaths. Inhale, bend your knees look forward. Exhale, hop or step forward. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, forward bend. Bring your feet together. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, Tadasana. Okay, last time. Inhale, chair. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, hop or step back, lower. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right foot forward. Warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, down dog, left foot forward. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, down dog, three deep breaths. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, hop or step forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward bend, feet together. Inhale, chair. Good. Exhale, Tadasana. Yay! Okay. So, downward facing dog, the like full pose is actually a back bend. So, when you're ready, you're gonna find downward facing dog. Okay. 
Okay. So from downward facing dog, start to turn your elbows, your inner elbows, the eyes of your elbows forward as much as you can. Then from there, try to take your forehead to the floor, even if it gets nowhere near there. And you will feel your back bending. You could bend your knees a little bit here to get it maybe slightly closer. And hold, breathing. Press your hands down and forward. Press your fingertips down. One more nice slow breath here. Okay, bring your knees to the floor. Let's do another shoulder stretch. Bring your elbows down. Place your palms together like prayer hands. And then walk your knees back. And so your knees are going to stay underneath your hips, but start to drop your belly down, your forehead down. We're going again into a back bend here. If you feel like you have the flexibility in your shoulders, you might bend your elbows and bring your thumbs toward the back of your head. But that might also be too much. So just see which variation you'd rather do. Fill yourself up with breath. If your hands are up, slowly start to bring them down again. Bring your big toes together, knees wide, and push yourself back into child's pose for a moment. And take a breath. On your next inhale, come up to hands and knees. And then as you exhale, you're gonna bend your elbows and slowly lower your thighs, then your belly, then your chest down to the ground, then your forehead. Now as you inhale, you're gonna come up into cobra. So lift your head, lift your chest, squeeze your inner elbows in a little bit. And then exhale, push back to child's pose. Pull back from your belly button, push your hips back to, back to your heels. Now on your inhale, stand on your knees and reach up. A lot, most of you have done this with me before. So stand up, stand on your knees, reach up. <laughs> and then exhale back to child's pose. So that's going to be the little sequence there. Inhale, hands and knees. Exhale, slowly lower. Bend your elbows, bring your thighs down first, then your belly, then your chest. Inhale, curl up for cobra, roll your shoulders back, broaden your collarbones, and then exhale, push back to child's pose. Inhale, stand on your knees and reach up. Yes, okay. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, coming to hands and knees, just passing through it really. Exhale, slowly lower yourself down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, stand on your knees and reach up. Okay, just like that. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, hands and knees. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, stand on your knees and reach up. This time, stay in the camel pose variation with your arms overhead. It's going to be like you're reaching for something up here. Take a deep inhale. And then exhale, make fists. And you're gonna lean back, but as you lean back, push your pelvis forward, and it's almost like you're pulling something down and back. Yes. Okay. And then inhale, come forward so you're more directly over your knees. Exhale, keep your pelvis pushing forward as your heart goes back. Pull. Yep, and then keep going. Inhale up. Exhale, pull. 
couple more. And try to like flex your arms as you're doing this. Flex your muscles. One more time. As you pull back this time, you're gonna hang out there for a second and just sort of wobble from side to side. Yes. Oh, say hello to your quadricep muscles. Good. Start to come forward. Go to downward facing dog for a moment and take a breath. And from here, inhale, lift your right leg up behind you. And exhale, step your right foot forward. And inhale, stand up into high lunge. So your back heel is going to be lifted over the ball of your back foot. Mm -hmm. And then widen your feet apart a little bit more. Okay. Bend your right knee over your ankle. You can do arms overhead here or hands on hips, whichever one is better for you right now. So you're going to inhale here, reach up with your arms, and then exhale, bend your back knee deeply, but not to the floor. Inhale, straighten your back leg. Exhale, rebend. So we're going a little further into our quads here. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Just a few more. Nice and slow, breathing as you move. Last couple times. As best you can, try to keep your front knee over your ankle. So the front leg moves a lot less than the back leg. Good. So this next one, bend your back knee all the way to the ground, nice and slow. Good. And then place both hands on your front thigh. You're gonna push down and forward and sort of tuck your chin, pull your chest away from your leg. Like you're trying to hollow out your belly a little bit here. You can breathe. Take another breath. Okay. Quad stretch. Um, let's try it this way. You're gonna bring your butt back towards your back heel a little bit. Turn, grab a hold of your left ankle or the top of your foot, whatever you can grab. So if you bring your butt back, you're closer to your leg, it's easier to grab it. And then bring your hips forward as you pick your foot up off the ground. Ooh, you still might fall over. <laughs> Okay, from here, bend your uh, right knee really deeply. If this is hurting your knee, you might put something underneath your uh, left knee. Good. If you want, you can kick your foot into your hand. That just gives like a little counter um, engagement to the stretch. You don't have to do that. Or you could pull your heel in even closer to your butt and get a deeper quad stretch if you really need that. Take another breath. And one more. Good. And then let your left foot come down. Step back to down dog. Take a deep inhale and exhale and down dog. Inhale, lift your left leg up. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Starting in high lunge again. Press off of your feet to stand. Back heel directly over the ball of your back foot. And then walk your feet just a little bit further apart from each other. Mm -hmm. You can start with your hands on your hips or arms overhead, whichever one is better for you today. Take a deep inhale here. And then exhale, begin to bend your back knee. Inhale to straighten it back out. So the front leg really doesn't do much. It's gonna move with you a little bit. 
but we're not bending and unbending our left leg, just our right. You can notice which side is like a little bit better at doing this or stronger feeling. You're shaking on one side and not the other. Remember at any time, if you've got your arms up, if it's too much hands on hips, I see you guys doing that, that's great. Just a few more. Go past the point where we want it to stop. <laughs> Just a little past that point. Last time. And then slowly lower your right knee to the ground. And we'll start out with this stretch. You're going to stack your hands just above your left knee and push your leg away from you. Try to hollow out your belly, tuck your chin a little bit. Last deep breath. Okay. Bring your hips back towards your back leg. So your butt goes back so that it's just slightly easier to grab for your right ankle with your right hand or the top of your right foot. And then lift your foot, bring it with you as you come forward again. Turn your chest forward again. And you can decide if you want to kick your foot back into your hand or just pull it closer to you, but bend deeply into your front knee. Let your front knee come in front of your ankle and you'll get a way deeper stretch in your right thigh. And then breathe. Breathe and feel. <laughs> Take two more slow, deep breaths here. Okay, start to slowly release that back foot and step back to down dog once again. Another inhale and exhale here. And on your inhale, come forward to plank pose. So inhale, plank. <laughs> and then exhale, slowly lower to the ground. All right. Start out by placing your left cheek on the ground, arms at your sides. So let's get some of these belly down back bends going. Bring your big toes together so that they touch. And stretch your legs a little further back before you do that. Then big toes together so they touch. Start to press your pubic bone down. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Yeah, and then lift your arms away from your back. Don't lift up anything else yet, just your arms. Now bring your forehead to the floor. Take a deep inhale. Exhale through your mouth. And then inhale, lift your head and chest and feet. Keep your big toes together. So inhaling up into bound Shalavasana. Another breath here. Supposed to hold these for 20 seconds, according to Iyengar. Let's see. Another breath. Have no idea how long 20 seconds is. And then come back down. Put your opposite cheek on the ground, arms come apart, and rest.
Okay, forehead on the ground. You place your hands down next to the sides of your ribs so that your fingernails are pretty much underneath the front of your shoulders. Okay, squeeze your elbows towards each other. And then think about where the bottom tip of your scapula are, your shoulder blades, and press that in. And from here, big toes still touching. As you inhale, lift your head and chest up for cobra pose with your feet together, which we rarely do. So big toes together, inhale, lift up, cobra. There we go. Now, you're going to stay here for a breath. And then start to straighten your elbows a little more, bit more. So press into your hands. But as you do, keep your shoulders rolling down your back. So bottom tip of your shoulders presses in. Heart moves forward. Shoulders stay away from your ears. Take another breath. Squeeze your inner elbows in. One more time. Try to straighten your elbows slightly more. Pubic bone stays on the ground. And then lower down. Left cheek on the floor, arms at your sides, rest. Okay, so you're aware of where you got to by straightening your arms. And I invite you to go right back to that place when we come up next time in Cobra. But um, if it was a place that's like pretty hard, you don't want to go there again, obviously, doing a little bit less of a back bend this time. Um, so it's up to you, but big toes together, press your toenails down, press your pubic bone down, arms at your sides, next to the sides of your ribs. Work that shoulder magic, press the bottom tips of your shoulders in, and on your next inhale, curl up to cobra pose, to the variation that's like playing your edge. So inhale, curling all the way up to that, the pose that you were at that was sort of like your deepest one, or you could still breathe, I hope. <laughs> and for those of you that feel like you can, you might go further now in this variation and straighten your elbows. So full cobra poses, straight, straight elbows, big toes touching. Take another breath, and then slowly come down. Like really slow. And this time, rest your right cheek on the ground, arms at your sides. Okay. Next, belly down, back bend, um, lacrosana, crocodile pose. Interlace your fingers, but place them on the back of your head. This one's really strange. So you interlace your fingers, put them on the back of your head, on your, uh, the occiput, so the kind of back of your head part that sticks out. And then you're gonna bend your knees um, and either point your toes or flex your uh, ankle. So you can either take your toes towards your shin or toward the ceiling, whatever is going to not give you a calf cramp. <laughs> and then press your pubic bone down. Hands are interlaced on the back of your head. Take a deep inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. And then on your inhale, press your pubic bone down, lift everything else up. When you're ready, go for it. Inhaling up. So the deal is with the hands on the back of your head, it adds weight to your upper body. So you really push your head into your hands. You don't have to try to spread your elbows apart or anything. Let your arms be relaxed, but push your head back. Squeeze your inner knees in, last breath. And then come out of the pose, right cheek on the ground. Okay. 
how about upward facing dog? Now, upward facing dog is so it's hard because you have to lift your thighs up off the ground. So let's look at different ways to go into up dog. Take your hands to the ground just a little bit lower than where you had them for cobra. So your hands are going to be more like at your low rib area. Forehead on the ground, tuck your toes underneath your feet. We're going to push up from here into plank pose. So take a deep inhale. Exhale to plank. Okay, from plank pose, flip your feet. So put the top of your feet on the ground. Toenails on the floor. Well, and then move your heart forward. So you're going to push your hands down and pull them back as your heart goes forward, almost like you're trying to drag yourself forward through your arms. And as you do that, your hips go down, your thighs are up, you are in, up dog, look up, take a breath. Okay, and then slowly lower all the way down to the ground. So that's one way to come up into up dog. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good way. So we can also do this from the floor. So just remembering that up dog is not cobra pose. So your thighs are gonna be off the ground and your pubic bone will be off the floor. You're sort of hovering, it's like a hovering cobra pose. So here we go. Take your hands down lower than they were, like we just had them. So your finger, your hands are pretty much next to the lowest part of your rib cage. It creates a little bit more of a 90 degree angle there in your arms. Reach your toes back, reach your legs back. For this, keep your feet hip distance apart. Take a deep inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. And then on your next inhale, you're gonna curl up. So you're gonna pull your body forward and up for up dog. Yes, lots of wristy stuff here today. Press into your fingertips. Pull that bottom tip of your shoulder blades in, take another breath. And then put your knees down, lift your butt up and go back to child's pose. Okay, on your next inhale, come to hands and knees. And then stand up on your knees. And you might turn to the side on your yoga mat, just so you have enough space. We're gonna use gate pose to counter that, all the back bending there. Take your right leg out to the side. Line your right ankle and your hip up, and look, take a look at your left hip, line that up over your left knee. Right hand starts on your right thigh. Turn your right hand so your palm is facing up. And then reach your left arm up. You're going to stretch up. Take a deep inhale. And then exhale, side bend to the right. So you slide your right hand down your leg as you side bend. And do gate pose. Breathe deeply here. One more breath. As you inhale, reach up and over to come out of the pose and exhale, land yourself in the second part of the pose. So your left hand is going to come to the floor underneath your left shoulder or on a block if you've got one and you're using it. Take your right arm over your ear. This is a lot like side plank modified. That bottom knee down. So I'm going to keep in mind if you like side plank, but you think it's a little bit too much sometimes when you bring that bottom knee down. Let's add a little bit of a twist. Turn your heart up toward the ceiling a little bit more. And look up. Breathe. Take another breath. Okay. Turn the right side of your chest forward. 
Reach up and over with your right arm to come out. Sit on your heels for a moment. Your hands on your thighs. Close your eyes. And just enjoy being done for a second with that side. Feel you know how you're feeling. and then getting ready for the second side. Stand on your knees. Take your left leg out to the side, line up your joints. Place your left hand on your left thigh, turn your palm to face up. Reach your right arm up, inhale, stretch up. And then exhale, side bend to the left. And breathe. So technically we're still back bending. <laughs> we're just bending to the side now. And just feel the stretch, like really notice it, pay attention to it where you're feeling it. Last breath. Use your right hand to help you come up and over, and then just follow that all the way to the floor. Right hand lands underneath your right shoulder. Take your left arm over your ear this time. And stretch. If you push into your left foot a little bit, you might be able to feel like you can stretch a little further, and then start to turn your heart up toward the ceiling. You put just a little bit of twist here as you breathe. Take another breath. On your inhale, turn the left side of your chest forward, and then exhale, lifting all the way up. Once again, just take a moment to sit on your shins and feel the rebound, the after effects of doing that. and then start to open your eyes. Find your way onto your back, please. And then once you're on your back, take just a second. You can hug your knees. Really do, do the thing that your body tells you to do once you lay on your back. You might choose to take another cleansing breath there, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. I think the next pose is called cat catching its own tail or something like that in yin yoga, but it's sort of weird. So if, you, if I explain it and you're like, what the fuck, you can sit up and look at what I'm doing and hopefully get a clearer idea of it. But I think I, think in, I can do this, so. Uh, bend your knees, place your feet on the floor, and then drop both of your knees over to the right. Okay, from here, lift your head, lift your head, lift your feet, and grab your right ankle or the top of your foot with your left hand. And then lay back down. Kick your left foot out to the side, out to the right, and then uh, lay back down, bring your left shoulder to the floor. You could also do this with your left knee bent, if that makes it feel better for you. 
you know, wiggle a little bit. You might try to line your right knee up even more with your right hip, and that could deepen the stretch. Although, for most of us, it's probably going to be a deep enough stretch right where it is. Yeah, so if it's a pain to hold your left leg up and, uh, and straight, it might be better to bend your left knee. And you can even take your right hand to the outside of your left knee. Sort of like a little bit more like we would normally do this uh, reclined twisting pose. Difference being that we have our back foot in our hand. Yeah, take a few breaths there. Last deep inhale and exhale before you exit the pose. And when you come out of the pose, do it nice and slow. So you might release your bottom foot first and then slowly come back to feet on the floor and take a breath between sides. Maybe even more than one breath if you'd like. Really feel the difference between sides before moving to the second side. And then when you're ready, drop both knees to the left this time. Lift your head and chest, lift your feet so you can more easily grab that bottom foot with your right hand. You can grab the ankle or the top of your foot, whatever you can more easily grab. And then bring your head back down and legs back down. You might try to scoot that left knee over a little bit more in line with your hip. That will deepen the stretch. So if it's not what you want, don't do that. And then you can either have your right knee bent or straight. It's up to you. And we'll be here for a minute or two, just breathing. The more you can keep your right shoulder on the ground, the more uh, twisty stretchiness you'll experience. Notice the difference on both sides. Feel all the things. Breathe slow, deep breaths. Bringing your mind back to your body, back to your breath.
final inhale and exhale here. Slowly unwind and return to knees bent, feet on the floor. And once you're there, feel now both sides complete. If there's another counter pose that you feel like you need to do before final resting position, I invite you to do that now. Otherwise, um, you might like to rest with something underneath your knees because of all the back bending that we did. So if you've got your blanket still around handing, you can roll that up and put it underneath your knees or if you've got blocks or whatever you have. If you don't have something like that, that's okay too. You could stack your hands and um, place those underneath your lower back, underneath your butt. And then we'll begin Shavasana there. You might choose to do some cleansing breaths. Get the space of your mat, get what you need to make you feel comfortable. We'll spend a few minutes here in Shavasana. Starting to bring yourself back now.
taking some time to move a little bit. And do any last stretching that might feel good or necessary. And then the next few breaths, find your way back up to a comfortable seated position. We can sit up tall and breathe deeply. Can leave your hands where they are, bring them together in front of your heart. And let's end with a final ohm. Take a deep inhale. Thank you guys so much. Namaste. If your back is sore, do forward bends tomorrow. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you for the class. Yeah, you're welcome. Anna, I have, um, I'm selling all my props. I know you're not on, on Facebook or anything to know that, but I'm selling all the yoga props from my studio. So if you want to buy any yoga props, they're pretty cheap. <laughs> so I've got bolsters and like foam rollers and I have straps and, you know, I got all that blocks if you guys are interested or know somebody who would want that stuff. So, alrighty. Okay, you guys. Have a good night. Bye.